The Scone Horse Festival always kicks off with a parade and on the weekend it was no different. And it was considered just about the best start to the 10 day celebration of all things equine. Today students and their steeds took centre stage at White Park for the horse sports for schools. More than 260 school children aged between 8 and 17 showing off their horsemanship over a variety of disciplines. Yeah, it brings a lot to town, like with 260 odd riders here, plus their parents and friends and kids and that, and all the school children from the local schools come down for a bit of a look, and it uh, brings a fair bit of money into town, I think. Here, rider and mount were small in stature, but both had enough enthusiasm to make up for any shortfalls. And we're not sure if this horse was short-sighted or willing himself not to eat the obstacle, but the effort was certainly worth a thumbs up all enough to work up a healthy appetite. But it was other four-legged friends that stole today's spotlight, the canine version of high jump testing many a mutt. But with every success came an increase in height. Many tried and failed, some waited for the right opportunity before saying bye-bye. But there has to be a champion and today's goes by the name of Custard. Cullen Robinson, NBN News. <laughs> Yippee! Smiles all round at United's recovery today, and why not? The team winning its first match of the final series against the minor premiers. But we got what we deserved last night, which was a result. Full of praise for his younger players, it was Ryan Griffiths who scored the first goal midway through the first half. It was a bit of a relief because I was shooting bad during the week and uh, at training and uh, I just took that one very uh, casually and, and just slotted away nice. When he was brought down just a few minutes later attacking once again, Newcastle was awarded a shot from the spot. Travis Dodd stepped up to take it and a 2-0 lead. Olympic halved that lead in the second half, with Hiroyuki Yoshida poaching one after Tom Willis was at full stretch. Frustrations led to bookings and Olympic was down to 10 men for the last 20 minutes. It opened up the game even more. Willis capping off a fine game with a save that sealed a one-goal win. Nominations released today include Joel Griffiths for the game's top award. Daniel Beltrame has a hand on the goalkeeping award, while Peter McPherson must beat former United player John Majorowski for the Northern Youth Award title. In light of recent weeks, it was interesting to see the club has won the season's Fair Play Award.
Slowly but surely for Newcastle United, players lost are turning into players gained. This week it's Joey Schripper and Milan Blagojevic slated to return from injury and Asala Masi from suspension. Even injury clouds following the win against Olympics seem to be clearing, with Adam Hughes, Adam Griffiths and Robbie Middleby all named to take on the spirit and Travis Dodd's broken nose on the mend. Alex Moriera has been left off the list and there's no guarantee those players returning will make the starting side. In some ways that may be unfair on, on the boys that performed in the week. We still have to look towards next year as well to some extent. Friday's match at North Sydney Oval will be a case of fifth versus sixth and a win to United will give it the chance to avoid last place in the finals. Look, I don't want to finish bottom, don't get me wrong, but that's not the important thing there. The important thing is is trying to develop some uh, performances and we'll maybe experiment uh, over the next couple of weeks on some, uh, some systems that we can use for next year. So Colin Baldwin, NBN News. Margaret Metcalf has been doing crochet since she was 12, developing patterns. Very satisfying because you've, um, you're creating something that nobody else has. Writing books and even teaching. But then there's some people even Margaret can't help. But this story is as much about neighbours as it is crochet. And two years ago, a walk across the street saw the beginning of a very successful e-commerce journey. Craig Harkin was starting a web business and needed something to practice on and thought Margaret's crochet expertise would be the perfect beginning. Margaret was a technophobe back in those days. She, uh, she resisted it and I really had to, uh, to push her along a bit to get her involved in it. But once we got that first order um, and it all started to happen, she, uh, she changed the tune and she's right into it now. That order was from the United States, much of where her business now comes from. In only two years, the unlikely crochet.com.au has become one of the country's most popular craft sites. It has in excess of 120,000 visits, more than 20,000 downloads, while 2,000 people subscribe to Margaret's newsletter. And to think the job of convincing Margaret of the idea was as hard as developing crochet.com.au. It's pushed me along a bit, probably more than what I ever wanted to do, and it's been very satisfying, and I've got a lot to thank him for. I'll probably do him another set of towels, <laughs> and that's his payment. Not to mention a spinach and ricotta pie. One day we were working on the site, and uh, I usually cook dinner here, and Margaret felt a bit bad that um, the family were going hungry, so she whipped over and brought a, a pie back for me to feed the, the missus and the kids. Cullen Robinson, NBN News. Rain-bearing clouds caressing the hills around Woodlands, south of Musselbrook, is the morale-boost Hunter Valley farmers have anxiously awaited. Brown paddocks in this area show just how far the region is from being out of drought. For Singleton dairy farmer Robert Worth, it's been a frustrating month, waiting for rain to freshen up the ground. We had 25 mil just before Easter and have only had 10 mil since Easter and um, it's getting really dry here. Drought and the current state of the dairy industry have already cut the size of the Worth herd. Unless there's substantial rain, Robert Worth believes he won't be the only one taking another look at stock numbers. We need to get some rain now to get our pasture growth really going before we hit our cold periods in the middle of June, early July. Because if we don't get that, we, we're going to see it and not just dairy and it's going to be beef, it's going to be right widespread across the hunter. This feed shortages if we can't get good rain now to get things moving. The biggest problem is the shortage of water for stock, a situation so dire some farmers are cleaning out already dry dams to be ready for substantial runoff. Gary Blair, NBN News.
You know it's wet when a water-based hockey field passes as a dry track, and that's where the Knights found themselves doing invaluable lead-up work this morning. Just glad to be stretching out too was Steve Simpson, back sooner than expected and ready to go. I've been training for two weeks now and it's feeling better and better every run I take, so um, hopefully by Sunday I'll be pretty close to 100%. Like his teammates, Simpson is hoping the club's six country reps pull through tomorrow's clash with City and those enthusiasm from the Knights' younger brigade could prove a big help to those backing up. It's a long game, I think 80 minutes, especially in a rep game, so uh, yeah, they'll probably need a little bit of a G up here and there, but yeah, we'll be right. The second rower was a keen observer of the Roosters' epic battle with the Bulldogs last Friday, but the Sydney Siders haven't lost two on the trot yet this season. We're always under the impression that good sides never lose twice in a row, so uh, we'd like to keep that record. Colin Baldwin, NBN News. Expectations in camp are high for tonight's clash against the City boys. The weather conditions all week have been nothing short of horrendous. The team's only had two ball work sessions and both times the training over was under two or three inches of water, making things very really tough. Now, country does have the advantage of several combinations with six players from the Knights and four from the Dragons. Most important is the state and Australian players, Andrew Johns and Trent Barrett. They fill the halves, which will make it easier for the, ter the team to gel given the limited preparations. Now, without halving on the conditions, it will dictate how the match is played. Our game plans will focus on dummy half running and a long kicking game. I've got to say the City team is well served in that department. Mark Gaznier, Craig Wing and John Hapawadi are three of the game's best runners from the ruck, while Brent Sherwin, well, if his kicking game is on song, it'll be tough for the country boys. Now, having said that, I'm going for country for sure. It's going to be a very physical match. Make sure you don't miss it. It's tonight at 8.30. Now, this round is a tough one to pick. We have uh, on Saturday five players from the Dragons backing up from tonight's game and I'm going to go with the Bulldogs in that one. In other Saturday matches, I like the Raiders and the Cowboys. On Sunday, the match of the round undoubtedly is the, uh, the Roosters against the Knights at Aussie Stadium. I think the Knights are specials to win this one. The Broncos and the Sharks to win their matches and I also think the Eels can break their losing streak. Anyway, that's it from me. Good luck with your tips. Catch you next week. The sun peeped through for the first time in days, and that wasn't the only highlight, given their talent.
The sun peeped through for the first time in days, and that wasn't the only highlight. Given their talent-laden squad, St John's Park threatened to be the team to watch in the final series, and they didn't disappoint. Down early, Mount Lewis made a real match of it, but with players like Steve Anderson on song, St John's kept their nose in front. Late in their battle, the Gary May skip at Mount Lewis 4 had the better of Steve Glasson's. However, the country's number one still had time for a laugh. Levelled a rink each, the match winner came from Rex Johnston's 4, who finished 11 shots clear and sealing the title. The sportsmanship was great and the opposition was fantastic and we're we just, we just over the moon. As part of the budget, universities will be able to charge up to 30% on top of current course fees. It's this increase that has the international students worried, many of them forced to reassess their options. A lot of students are pretty concerned, um, some to the point of almost um, frustration, as it is getting the amount that we have to pay as international students. Full fee paying international students is, is quite a sum. The Students' Association is lobbying to have the changes blocked in the Senate. That looking at the changes that the government are bringing in, really, it looks like they're seeing um, students from other countries as a resource, like cash cows, to um, get, more, get more funding for universities that they're not willing to put in. It's estimated the Hunter's 2,500 international students spend around $75 million per annum. In an attempt to lure more students, a group of industry and education stakeholders met today for a brainstorming session. International student as an export is the fourth, fourth biggest uh, export industry in Australia at the moment and it's getting bigger. Tanya Carlisle, NBN News.
stroke is the third greatest killer in Australia, affecting up to 40,000 people every year. For those living in the Hunter, the chance of recovering from a stroke has been improved thanks to a new specialist unit. It reduces the chances of dying or having uh, long-term disability, such as needing to go to a nursing home after a stroke, by about 25% if a, a, a patient's looked after in a specialised stroke unit as compared to a standard medical ward. The ward is divided into two parts, an acute unit where patients are monitored closely and an enablement unit where patients can start rehabilitation and physiotherapy. And from a patient's point of view, the new stroke unit is also a lot more comfortable than facilities previously offered at the hospital. Bigger and uh, more modern, of course, and uh, easily to access, you know, walking space is plentiful, and uh, yeah, it's really nice. Tanya Carlisle, NBN News. Joel Griffiths has given Newcastle United fans plenty to cheer about this season, finding the back of the net 15 times. Even though he's back home and running, the need to fully recover from a hamstring injury before starting a three-year playing stint in Switzerland, fans will be denied one last glimpse of Griff's magic. And Joel admits it'll be just as hard on him to watch Perth from the sidelines. While Newcastle has lost its leading scorer for this season, Griffiths admits he couldn't pass up the opportunity. It's something I've always wanted to do and uh, you know, I don't want to look back in my career and say what if. Fijian international Asala Massey is expected to be named in the United team tomorrow to tackle the NSL grand final hosts and he's ready to return from suspension. Oh, very keen, very keen to get out there and um, especially playing Perth. Um, you know, to f uh, win, win on the weekend and uh, finish on a high note will be good for us, good for next season. Gary Blair, NBN News. Police say the initial arrests were made when two men in a car being followed by officers from Strike Force Biology met a second vehicle on the old Brooklyn Bridge for an alleged drug deal. Police detained four men at the scene, taking them to Gosford Police Station where they were charged with drug related offences. Uh, there were small quantities on the, uh, the people arrested yesterday and a small amount of cash. As a result of further questioning, a search warrant was executed at a home in Martin Street, Shortland, where another four people were arrested, once again for drug-related offences. Out of the four people charged at the Shortland address, three will refuse bail to appear in Newcastle local court today. Police say yesterday's bust is a major blow to the region's drug rings and will lead to further arrests. The latest spate of charges comes less than 24 hours after Target Action Group officers swooped on a Wickham home and arrested a 36-year-old woman, allegedly in possession of prohibited drugs and a large amount of cash. Police are refusing to say if the two incidents are linked. Stephen Mount, NBN News. Initially it seemed he wouldn't play, but now Joel Griffiths hopes to give Newcastle fans one last hurrah before he heads to Switzerland. The star striker, though, will be assigned to the bench this Friday against Perth, while fellow favourite son Andy Roberts is determined to take to the field in his last home game before retirement. He's rested his back all week for, for this game coming up, so if he can get a bit of match time, I think it will be just um, a great thing to... To hopefully finish on a good note. There's still some boys who are not too sure about their future, whether it be here or whether it be somewhere else, and um, you know they're obviously trying to secure something for, for the next year. 
Among those also appearing in Newcastle colours for possibly the last time, off-contract players Matthew Bingley, Joey Schripper and Adam Hughes. The possibility factor coming due to Soccer Australia's preference to have the washed-out clash with the Spirit played during grand final week and not cancelled altogether, despite question marks over ground and player availability. It's a dead rubber, it's a nothing game uh, and certainly uh, both clubs are after no points for it. Colin Baldwin, NBN News. While teammates are glad they don't see him charging at them too often, they welcome the sight of Ben Kennedy running today. Troubled by a hamstring problem all week, the test forward passed fit today. Yeah, I guess the fact that he got through most of last weekend's game and, and uh, he's worked really hard to get it treated, so he's been a thorough professional in his preparation and um, if he's confident playing, then we're happy for him to play. The coach is expecting a lot from his pack tomorrow night with Josh Perry returning and Steve Simpson better for the run last weekend after his long stint on the sideline. After the loss, like you really want to hit back, and especially in front of our home crowd. And, uh, and Robbie has 200th game, so I've got a fair bit to play for and uh, we're looking forward to it. The same can be said for the pending return of Adam McDougall. The state and test winger hasn't played since injuring a knee in his only appearance last season more than a year ago. He wasn't at training today but is expected back next week when a return date to playing will be made. I think we'll assess uh, Adam on, on where he's at physically and I mean if he's 100% well you know, I think uh, we could use his help to be honest. Both parties claim a breakdown in communication after McDougall suffered complications to his knee earlier this year. That only led to speculation the club was seeking to part ways with the winger. Still with a year to run on his contract after this season, there will be no further talks in that regard for a few weeks at least. And as a result of that clearance and the anticipation of him being available to play, any discussions with regard to his future have been put on hold. Newcastle's Fort Scratchley is both a landmark and an historically significant site. 
the home of the only Australian guns to exchange fire with the Japanese submarine in World War II, will soon be owned by Newcastle Council. But the city wants the federal government to properly complete restoration work so the site's full tourism potential can be realised. Yes, there are some uh, safety issues up here and of course uh, the cliff is uh, destabilising as well. All that's got to be fixed. One million dollars is needed and that this afternoon brought Special Minister of State Erica Betts to the fort. The hands-on tour worked in grabbing his attention about the need to complete the job. Fire! The lobbying of the Mayor and uh, Senator John Tierney and what I've seen today will uh, make me, I think, favourably disposed to do something but what I cannot say at this stage. Senator Abetz has also been briefed on the need for more federal money so the Newcastle Regional Maritime Centre at Honeysuckle can accommodate HMAS Newcastle. Gary Blair, NBN News. Morpeth was the final stop on the 3,000 kilometre journey and the town again went all out to make the crews feel welcome. As the cars rolled in, many participants seemed surprisingly relaxed after their long journey, which had taken in the sights of towns such as Canambal, Burke and Wilkenya. Bush tracks, a lot of dirt, got bogged a couple of times, but it was really good. And the wild road trip has all been for a good cause. The Variety Club raising much needed funds to help children and groups with special needs. The kids have been great, the days have been great, a little bit of mud, a little bit of dust, you know what you wanted. Out of all the entrants, it was the Crocmobile that had the wildest adventure. Along the way, Steve had to protect the locals from a deadly breed of outback crocodiles. We've had to dive in and it's safe now for little children, old people with caravans and women. Lyndall Derrick, NBN News. Rain held off for the first few heats, which meant quick times for the sprint-style enduro. Riders greeted the starter in 30-second intervals, but after that, it was a case of taking on the track and the clock. The day ended early for Wyong's Damien Smith as he tried to shoulder a collarbone injury. Taking out round three yesterday by just two seconds, series leader Glenn Kearney looked on track to make it a winning double for the weekend. But Brankston's Jake Stapleton had his foot down too. A former Australian six-day enduro team member, the teenager finished second today. It was Brad Willerscroft who proved too quick over the heats that made up round four. At Killingsworth, the track wasn't built for comfort either. 
but on a circuit they say is fast, once these mountain bike races began, so did around two hours of torture. Racing in round five of the state cross country series, the elite men faced six laps of seven and a half kilometres each and once Peter Hatton got in front, he didn't let go. Chased hard by Matthew Fleming, it was Perrin Delacour who placed second to Hatton. The 1-0 win against Perth on Friday night ended not only a frustrating finals campaign, but a season that left more questions than it answered. Trying to draw on the positives, it was hard to overlook a year plagued by injuries, suspension and controversial decisions and think what could have been. Frustration in the last few weeks, to be honest, because I think we, we all felt as a group that we had a real, uh, a real sniff at it. But it's already time to move on and rounding out a playing roster of 20 for next season is now the club's priority. Of the 12 players off contract, Andy Roberts retired. Joel Griffiths has signed overseas while four others have already been released. Travis Dodd has agreed to stay with United, leaving five in negotiation with the club. Of those, Daniel Beltrame is considered highly unlikely to remain, placing Scott Bailey, Michael Prentice, Alex Moriera and Milan Blagojevic searching for new deals. It's thought most of those four players will find it hard to stay at United next season, with the club understood to have attracted up to four new players for next season, two of whom who will play in the NSL Grand Final in Perth this weekend. Jim Callanan, NBN News.
brutally murdered on the island of Malaita in the Solomons a week ago, missionary Lance Gersbeck was today laid to rest by friends and family. The events of last Sunday have left our daughters, Louise and Anita, and myself totally devastated. I cannot express in words the pain that we are feeling today. A committed Seventh-day Adventist, Lance had been working at the island's hospital when he was killed, apparently over a land dispute. His wife Jean and daughters Louise and Anita were unharmed. It is with shame and grief that I stand here to represent the people of Malaita and the Solomon Islands. The church says the hospital will remain open, but with tighter security. It is essential that the Adventist Church continue its work on Malaita. In a nation that is divided by racial tensions, the church has so much to offer in areas such as health care, education and spiritual nature. Lance, I believe, would not want it to be any other way. It's close to $90 million worth of land. Last night, Lake Macquarie Council granted conditional approval for precincts two and three of North Lakes. However, its approval hinges on an agreement with the National Parks and Wildlife Service. And despite the issues surrounding threatened native flora and fauna in the area, developers are confident they'll get the green light. Well, in our view, all the environmental issues have been addressed. Um, the documentation that went in the, with the DA was very extensive, so this DA should be fairly straightforward with national parks. Council says it also needs to negotiate with the developer about levies and land acquisition. One thing that's certain about North Lakes is the demand for land. Over the last 18 months, the price of an average block has increased from $87 to $150,000. Basically, we can sell land out there as quickly as we can produce it. But Council says the price hikes are unfortunate, as the land was originally intended for first home buyers. It was an area that was set aside for, um, you know, first-home buyers and people uh, trying to establish themselves, and it, it is fast uh, pricing itself out of that range. Lyndall Derrick, NBN News. This is a sight and sound that will bring back memories for those old enough to remember. And at present, it's capturing the imagination of younger generations in towns across the Lower Hunter. Family interest and public demand, just some of the reasons why Cessnock Sylvester Brothers Bakers has turned the clock back 35 years and put two horse and cart teams back on the road for promotional purposes and select deliveries around the area. Paul, my younger brother. He decided to keep the tradition going and uh, it's a lot of people, to, you know, for charity work and things like that, they asked to, to load the horse up and away we go. A Sylvester's special delivery brought back memories this afternoon for long-time customer Gail Johns. The mother of Knights International, Andrew, still has her own memories of when bread was home delivered and payment was by prepaid tokens. Oh, well, I can remember as a child and bringing around the bread and I had to go and get half a loaf and I ate all the inside out of it before I got back and I was in big trouble, so beautiful warm bread. And even though time marches on like horses' hooves, Sylvester's intends to be true to their past and keep this classic piece of history on the road. Gary Blair, NBN News.
back on the trial's traditional home ground at Toronto after two days of rain, Weston's bleak injury toll was brightened by the sporting inclusion of three Hunter Sports high ring-ins. Tied 16-all with 10 left on the clock, Weston and Northern both searched for the game-breaker, Coonabarabran's Dane Kershaw running a mile for a try that just wasn't to be. His Farrah teammate Peter Taylor, though, danced past everyone for one that was. Northern halfback Brent Mulholland went close right on the buzzer, but the boys in green were beaten for the first and only time in the Opens tournament, 20 points to 16. Selectors then named two state teams for the Nationals and a test against Queensland in the coming months, with Sydney players dominating the under-15s, while a slightly more balanced open side features four Northerners and three Westerners and John Hopawadi's younger brother, Albert. Unfortunately, there's no CHS team choir selected, but the singing Sydney siders would have had it sewn up. Colin Baldwin, NBN News. So I guess it's it'll be new for us and new for them as well. So. It'd be nice to uh, get that sorted out from the word go and not let them get too comfortable on their new home ground. For several years now, the best of the best from the Archibald Prize have hit the road in a tour taking the nation's premier art competition to regional areas. After securing a stopover in 2001, the Lake Macquarie Gallery was surprised to get a turn again so soon, but wasn't about to argue. Well, last time in 2001, we had up to 400 people a day visiting, which was, was uh, extraordinary for us. Starting Friday, the free exhibition showcases the 32 finalists, including Geoffrey Dyer's winning portrait of Tasmanian author Richard Flanagan. But from Mr Squiggle's creator to music legend Jimmy Little, there's a variety of characters and styles on display. People love to have a little bit of an insight into people who normally they wouldn't have any personal contact with. The finalists hang around until the 22nd of June. After more than a decade in Newcastle, the Pepperina Cafe will close its doors next month. But it's not for a lack of trying to lure customers. Today it was tarot card readings, while tonight live performances will be held. Its owners say they're disappointed it hasn't been able to attract business from new inner city residents. I'm wondering whether they're really there or whether they're sort of uh, uh, holograms living in all these new apartments. But as yet it hasn't impacted on this end of the city. A lack of parking also prompted the decision to close. The business next door is facing a similar dilemma. We need more parking. We need parking stations built to accommodate the amount of traffic that's coming into the city. It's not helping the business. Meanwhile, over at Derby Street, businesses have got together to stage the city's first coffee festival to be held this Sunday. It'll feature alfresco dining and entertainment and, of course, some of Australia's best coffee. It's all about promoting coffee in Derby Street. This is a great place for the Cafe Society and all families to come out and enjoy themselves. But festival or not, for some it seems any day is a good opportunity to escape the daily grind with a good cuppa. Lyndall Derrick, NBN News.
It sounds simple in theory. Instead of the government providing money for the doll, it should instead be used to create jobs for the unemployed. Professor Bill Mitchell from the University of Newcastle presented the idea at today's federal government inquiry into poverty. Why can't it work if there's uh, unmet needs, workers who are currently unemployed who could uh, meet those needs? It's a recipe for success. Newcastle Council will lobby for federal funding so the strategy could become a pilot program. It could help overcome the current unemployment rates of 10.2% experienced from Tweed Heads to Taree and 7.5% in the Hunter. But the inquiry has found even those who have jobs are struggling to make ends meet. That's because 30% of the nation's workforce is now casual. But people can't plan their uh, their lives from week to week, can't plan the amount of expenditure they can use. And it's been revealed 13,000 people in Newcastle are battling to fund their daily needs. We're not talking about luxury items here, we're, we're talking about um, you know, being able to afford food for the family and, and paying your basic bills. Lyndall Derrick, NBN News. Angered by Friday's news, they'll get around 9% or 3 cents a litre less for their milk come July. Today, farmers got the chance to vent it. On farmers that are, uh, that are producing uh, a million litres of milk a year, the, uh, the net effect is going to be uh, somewhat over $30,000 a year out of their back pocket. The first of 20 meetings nationwide saw dairy farmers officials front Hunter and Northwest suppliers at Singleton Heights. The cooperative saying domestic and international market pressures have forced the fall. And our major competitors operate out of Victoria. They're paying their farmers at the moment about 10 cents a litre less. Next year even with our reduction we'll believe they'll still be 5 or 6 cents a litre less than us. So they've got a lot of ammunition when they take us on in the marketplace. Farmers, though, say they're being ignored and that the resulting exodus or mere fight to survive will also hurt the cooperative's production line. Whilst they say they feel for us, it's, it's not them that's got to go home and tell their employees that they haven't got a job anymore or they're cut back from a permanent to a casual or, and those sorts of things. The price drop, however, appears non-negotiable. While 300 farmers will talk with the Prime Minister on Thursday to push for more help for suppliers from the ACCC. Colin Baldwin, NBN News.
Unfortunately, I liked that for a while, but eventually I think, you know, what am I doing here? Lucky because we're doing a job that we absolutely love, so you don't think of it as a job. So to have sponsors that support Much like his lounge room wall, Travis Dodd will soon be in new colours, the blue and gold of Parramatta. Newcastle, though, is seeing red over his decision after Dodd agreed back in February to stay at United on a two-year deal. When a player agrees to terms, uh, we expect that, uh, that that is the commitment and, and, uh, and that doesn't alter. Dodd believes the club had ample time to complete the deal and couldn't refuse when a better option came along. There was never a contract put in front of me to sign, which I guess I would have happily signed. Um, and then I guess, yeah, something else came along. Having joined Newcastle as a teenager from Adelaide, the talented 23-year-old became a favourite during his four years in the city, where he plans to stay, preferring instead to commute to Parramatta during his one-year playing deal. Goalkeeper Daniel Beltrame will rejoin his old Wollongong coach, Nick Theodorakopoulos, at Parramatta. But his eyes are focused on a different horizon. My main aim and priority is um, to head off overseas before I do anything else. Um, this is basically just something to fall back on. If I don't go overseas, then I've always got another club to go to. Ironically, Newcastle has secured Parramatta's Damien Brown and expects to sign Perth's Craig Deans on Friday, while discussions continue with Greg Owens. And I would expect that uh, in the next two weeks the club will be able to finalise its roster for, for next year. Jim Callanan, NBN News. Now, Joey, don't you believe a word anyone says, especially that Matthew, you haven't got a big backside. <laughs> Socks up. <laughs> yeah, it's rehearsal. Mm. Now, whether it's right or not, I don't know. Talk about every concept and say, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wasn't a great player himself. No. Yeah. No. That's what I was doing. You know. This 16-year-old student is one of Australia's most talented emerging swimmers. Hayden Jackson has just returned from the All Schools Championships where he picked up five gold medals from five events. I was hoping to achieve just personal bests, but then when medals came along, I just took them as well. He can now lay claim to being the fastest schoolboy in Australia in the 800 and 1500 metres freestyle. He also came first in his age group in the 400 IM and the 200 and 400 metres freestyle. And soon he'll compete against some of his biggest idols. In a few months I'll be going down back down to Tasmania to do the open level where I'll be racing the likes of Grant Hackett and Ian Thorpe. But Hayden's also focused on his Year 11 studies at Macquarie College. He's in the pool every day for two hours at a time, but is careful to ensure it doesn't interfere with his schoolwork. 
Well, it's very hard to juggle it, but uh, I've been managing it quite well lately. While Hayden shows plenty of promise in the middle and long distance events, for now, this superfish is taking it one day at a time. Oh, I just hope to keep on, on improving and whatever comes, I'll take it as it comes. Lyndall Derrick, NBN News. This is part of the state's newest national park, 180 hectares of ruggedly beautiful coastal land between Caves Beach and Catherine Hill Bay has been handed over to national parks by the land's owner, Lensworth Developers. The company has plans to build almost 2,000 houses nearby and has struck a deal with Lake Macquarie Council. It was a uh, part of the discussion really of, of yes, we'll let you build there if, if we have that as a national park. The land, which includes Pinney Beach, was gazetted as a national park this week. Meantime, young environmentalists were being fired up at Toronto West today as part of World Environment Day. 300 students from 16 Lake Macquarie schools were shown the finer points of planting trees, while over at the Stony Creek Water Sampling Station, some were keener to test the water than others. These children are obviously going to um, be the next generation who will take over the role of protecting our environment. So we're, um, you know, we want to raise the awareness amongst them as much as we can. Paul Lobb, NBN News.